Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Obviously, Call of Duty is not shy to having controversial topics every single year, whether it is skill-based matchmaking or the cheating issues and the lack thereof of an anti-cheat, whatever the case may be, there's always something spicy going on in the COD community. And lately, the topic has shifted towards aim assist now this isn't necessarily a new topic it's been a hot topic in cod for several years you know dating back to warzone one in particular there were a lot of big discussions about it then but lately the past couple of weeks this is a topic that has really skyrocketed in terms of how much attention it is getting across all forms of social and today i wanted to break down why one it's such a hot topic but also if it's actually going to change do the devs have any interest in actually addressing this or updating this and why it won't or will be updated in the future so lots of interesting things to break down today as we get into it all if you enjoy the video do me a favor drop a like on it and of course if you're new here you want to guarantee that every single day you are up to date with all things going on in cod whether it is news updates patch notes meta breakdowns it's it's already here so feel free to hit that sub button and turn on those post notifications but yeah obviously if you are active on social media or even in the comments on videos i'm sure you've seen plenty of discourse surrounding aim assist it's too overpowered we should nerf it we should add it to keyboard and mouse all sorts of different ideas as to what would make cod a more welcoming space and how it would or could rather be navigated in a better way and charlie intel charles intelligence ended up posting this tweet saying what call of duty needs is to have input based matchmaking to avoid everyone is cheating in aim assist issues it's something we've told the devs for years, but the problem has been that there was not enough keyboard and mouse players to keep them in their own pool. Maybe there is now. Now, admittedly, there is a lot of blowback to this tweet in particular. If you were to go look at the replies, there is a lot of notable names saying, yeah, not a, not a good idea. This isn't it. But curiously enough, this was actually a planned thing for COD several years back in to this day, we still have no idea what happens, but you may recall that back in Modern Warfare 2019, just before launch, obviously the game was marketed like crazy. There was so much hype for revamping the Modern Warfare franchise and returning to that style of play. And obviously the game did numbers, but uh, pre-launch, Joe Seacott, the design director at the time for multiplayer, ended up talking specifically about this matchmaking. He did an interview with Dual Shockers, and Charlie Intel's reported on this as well. And they say in this, it's also worth noting that the PC version of Modern Warfare will have full cross play, and obviously that's something that's still active today. PC can play with PlayStation, PC can play with Xbox, PlayStation can play with Xbox, and vice versa every which way. But PC will have full cross play with PS4 and Xbox One, and multiplayer design director Joe Seacott delved into how exactly that'll work with Dual Shockers. We're going to be matchmaking by peripheral. So if you're a keyboard player, you're only going to play with other keyboard players. But if you're a console player and you're playing on a gamepad, you can actually opt in. We also don't let you change your controller or peripheral mid-match, so once you've chosen it, it's locked in. Now, Modern Warfare 2019 dropped, and this did not exist. There was no input-based matchmaking. If you played on controller, you'd match up against keyboard and mouse. If you played on controller on PC, you'd match up against other controllers on PC and controllers on console and keyboard and mouse on both platforms. And uh, there was no restrictions whatsoever. The only restrictions is PlayStation being able to opt out of uh, crossplay, which is definitely nice for limiting the skill-based matchmaking in effect there. But even that doesn't always fully work, it seems. Uh, but that just straight up didn't happen. And to this day, like I said, we don't know why that was not implemented. The multiplayer design director, Joe Seacott, specifically said it was going to be a thing. Now, going back to Charlie Intel's tweet, maybe it's because they initially wanted that, but then they realized, oh yeah, there's just not enough keyboard and mouse players to do this consistently. The vast majority of players on COD, objectively, are controller players. Whether they're playing controller on PC because they like having the higher frames, lower input latency, and everything like that, or if they're just straight up on console, obviously the preferred peripheral there is controller natively so the vast majority of players being on console in the first place means there's way more controller players than there are keyboard and mouse and even pre crossplay you can look back and see that clearly pc in and of itself being a primarily keyboard and mouse uh you know native input there 
the older versions of COD that didn't have crossplay, PC was not a thriving community. I mean, Blackout, let's look at that for instance, it was pretty successful on console, but there was like no PC community for it. It was dead pretty much on arrival. And while there has obviously been PC players on COD for decades now, uh, it's never been the most active community whatsoever. So maybe they just saw the data there and said, okay, it's clearly not worth it to have input-based matchmaking. But in theory, yes, that would be something that would directly attack these claims of aim assist but let's focus a little bit more on this what is the deal with aim assist and why is it such a hot topic well the main thing here is that aim assist is too strong but right away there's a little bit of confusion in that statement because aim assist inherently is never going to go away it's been in cod for years it's likely going to continue to be in cod for years and it's something that controller players pretty much know the feel of and rely on for their gameplay in general but aim assist that slight target slowdown when you're trying to you know trace somebody at any real distance is not mainly the issue here what really people are confusing with just general aim assist is rotational aim assist and this is a relatively new thing for cod it really uh you know caught attention a lot in warzone 1 in modern warfare 2019 this is the system of actively moving your character whether it's forward backwards left right and having aim assist applied at the same time and this is what you get uh those crazy clips from where it looks like players are just basically aim botting onto others they can track them close range or even mid range essentially no problem there because of rotational aim assist it picks up so much when your player is moving and the enemies fall into your aim assist bubble let's call it and that is what really is the system that's being abused so heavily by basically mediocre players and above and this is why for instance huskers one of the best keyboard and mouse players in gaming right now the other day you know if you follow huskers on twitter you always see him talking about aim assist it's kind of like a running bit but he posted saying just plugged in a controller and finally broke my pr on the new map i mean it kind of speaks for itself when you can have high tier players plug in an input and immediately see success uh symphony is another example as well one of the best keyboard and mouse players oftentimes plays on controller and fries teep as well one of the most successful professional call of duty players ever kind of plays hybrid goes back and forth between controller and keyboard and mouse all the time but still says hey controller is the main input that's where it's clearly uh easier to do well and so that's why this discussion is so popular you see uh that so many different people whether you're a mediocre player or the best of the best are able to essentially cheese rotational aim assist on controller and get distinct advantages in close range fights mid-range fights even some long range fights pending the range now base aim assist just that simple slowdown not really that uh you know abused it's useful and certainly necessary for a lot of players to be able to aim well on controller but not really the forefront of the issue and so there is sort of that level of confusion i guess you could say in what this argument and what this discourse is even about but here's the thing Keyboard and mouse has been at a disadvantage in certain situations for some time in COD, and there's really never been any direct uh, response to that from the devs. Now, they have said specifically this year, they are looking into keyboard and mouse input, just feeling off and not feeling as snappy as it should be. And that'll hopefully be updated and give keyboard and mouse players a little bit more of, uh, you know, an advantage for what they're trying to do and what they're good at there, whether it be snapping like crazy or just being really good at recoil control. There's a lot of different situations where keyboard and mouse could be advantageous and Hopefully the fixes that Sledgehammer and Raven have confirmed are being looked into uh, do make an impact there. But fact of the matter is controller players make up the vast majority of the Call of Duty player base and of the vast majority of the Call of Duty player base on controller, the majority of those are casual players obviously their largest demographic is the most casual players that don't really pay much attention to social media they don't watch youtube videos they don't see this discourse going on they're very mediocre players you know a little bit lower kds they're just jumping on to experience the new content they play for a couple hours a week that's who's playing cod the most and those players are not the ones wildly abusing the broken rotational aim assist those are the players that do need that slight aim assist slowdown to actually have a chance in fights and be able to make it seem like they are doing well in game and keeping them coming back to spend more money in the store and to put in the retention hours that makes call of duty look impressive to the shareholders so obviously they're going to appeal to the majority of the majority right and that is why aim assist as a whole definitely will not be changing at its you know core whatever the slowdown is for any given fight however rotational aim assist the true abused uh you know mechanic here 
that is something that certainly probably should be looked into and definitely adjusted because there is a significant gap in what you're able to do with rotational aim assist as a top tier player versus anyone else in the game who's either not at that level or not using that mechanic there so it's an interesting topic for sure however it's like an onion there are levels to it as well but hopefully this video provides a bit of insight into it and uh you know explains what to expect in terms of any change whatsoever into what is the new biggest issue in cod apparently that is gonna wrap things up though if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on it and of course if you're new here you want to guarantee that every single day you're up to date with news updates patch notes meta breakdowns loadouts literally everything going on is here so feel free to hit that subscribe button turn on those post notifications on your way out but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out